This is Excel Great Course 1, where I'm going to show you how to transform a blank workbook in Excel into this. I want to share with you everything I've learned in my 15 years of using Excel in a corporate environment to help fast track your learning. Through the course, I'll show you all of these features and techniques and loads more along the way. So whether you've used Excel before or you're a complete beginner, there'll be something here for you. I think you'll find the Excel Great method is a fresh and different approach to using Excel, and I genuinely hope you enjoy it. This is a template I've designed to support this course, and whilst I've kept it intentionally simple, it will introduce many of the core concepts and methods that are key to optimizing more complex future designs. For those of you that have used Excel before, you will notice that the layout and design are not typical of most Excel workbooks. At the starting point, we've got some navigation built in at the top, and then over to the left, we've got these useful methods of filtering data. What's more important though, is the parts that aren't immediately obvious. Upfront planning with regards to the structure and layout of the data you use in any Excel file is one of the most important things you can do to ensure that it works optimally as it grows. So whilst you should consider the look of the design as I have in the example file, it should never be at the expense of usability or efficiency. Those factors should be your primary focus when designing any Excel workbook. And to achieve these, structuring your data correctly from the outset is crucial. When you first open Excel, you'll see a screen which looks similar to this. I'll be using the version of Excel which comes as part of Office 365 for all of my videos. If your screen looks different, don't worry, as nearly everything I'll be showing you will work on older versions of Excel that were released in the last five or 10 years. There's quite a lot of options on this initial screen, but for now, we're gonna choose blank workbook by double clicking on it. If you're new to Excel, the first thing that probably strikes you is how many different things there are at the top. Well, the bad news is there's more than it first appears. This area at the top is called the ribbon, and it's split into multiple section headings which aim to categorize the hundreds of different Excel features into logical containers. The good news is that you don't need to learn all of them in order to make great Excel workbooks. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that only 5-10% to of them are commonly used, and some I can honestly say I've never used, and probably never will. Excel works on a grid system with columns and rows. The columns are listed along the top and they're labelled as letters. Those letters go from A to Z and then continue with AA, AB and so on all the way to XFD. There's actually over 16,000 columns available in Excel, but you shouldn't get close to using that amount in a well laid out design. Rows are listed down the left hand side and labelled as numbers. There's over a million rows in Excel and whilst it's very unlikely you would need all of them, unlike columns, there's genuine reasons to use a higher amount of rows than columns. Cells are just containers that hold data. They can hold text or numbers. And to add data to a cell, you just click on that cell and then type. So there, I've added some numbers. It's as simple as that. Once you manage to get some data inside a cell, you can then format that in loads of different ways. I'm gonna show you just a few of those options now, but trust me, there's loads of different things you can do and you can pretty much tune it to whatever you want. So to do that, just click back in the cell to select it. And then, for example, we could change the background color. So pick something from the color palette like this green. We could then increase the font by picking something much bigger. And you'll notice that the cell itself grows with the change of that font size. I could also change the font as I could in any other Office application like Word, for example, and any number of other things. Like I say, I'll show you those in some of the rest of the course. But for now, there's a few examples. So that was a very brief introduction to the layout you see behind me. For everything else, I'm going to take you through step by step in an order which should help you to gradually build on knowledge as it's needed to progress. So a bit about this course. I'm not going to just show you all of the features in Excel one by one just to tick them off the list as that would be pointless. Instead, I'll show you the necessary features in a logical order and we'll build some decent tools from scratch in the process. I'll give you some supporting tools, techniques and tricks along the way to get the best out of Excel and avoid some of the pitfalls. There's also a number of tools I'll choose not to show you as they aren't necessary or there's alternative methods which are proven to be simpler or more efficient. The focus here is all about getting results in the most streamlined way and trying to pass on my passion for what I truly believe is an incredible product. The next video is lesson one where I'll be showing you how to resize columns and rows and explaining the difference between worksheets and workbooks in Excel.